Namaste everyone. I am Chandresh Bharadwaj and today I'll be sharing a mantra and a meditation tip to build self-trust. The feedback, the questions that you all sent me from the last video about self-trust, uh, that's what motivated me to share the mantra because many of you asked if there's a mantra that's specifically for the self-trust okay so this video is going to be about that mantra about uh, how to integrating the mantra with meditation and also a little a uh, little bit insight on what mantras really are and how you can use them and many of you asked if i'm doing any virtual workshops so yes i am doing a bunch of vir uh, virtual workshops one of them is happening this weekend it's on Saturday night, 90 minute workshop with Den Meditation. The link is in the bio or it's in the show description if you're watching me on YouTube. So definitely join me wherever you are and hopefully you'll benefit from the workshop. It's going to be on cultivating calmness and courage uh, using meditation practices, life lessons, self-reflections and all that good stuff. Okay. Now, Talking about uh, the mantras for self-trust. Before I give you the mantra, there are a couple of interesting points that we need to understand about the mantras. Number one is, what exactly is mantra? Does it come from a religion? Does it uh, include a, a certain set of guidelines and norms? Uh, we could talk forever about you know, mantras for the sake of this video. I want to address specifically, you know, a couple of things. One of them is the meaning of mantra. The literal meaning of mantra is instrument of the mind. Just like any instrument, mantra helps to manage your mind. And that's the first basic fundamental quality of a mantra. It helps to manage the mind. But as you start to go deeper into mantra practices, as you start to do deeper, profound, primordial mantras, they can help you connect to other dimensions. They can open up your healing abilities. They can open up the blockages that have been stopping your you know, life experience abundance from ages, not just your experiences, but the experience of your lineage, your family. That's how much power a mantra has. Now, this is the reason why we should not be doing a mantra uh, from any random book or online source. Each mantra comes with so much power, so much effect, that if you randomly pick a mantra, it's not going to work out well for you. It's like going to a pharmacy and just pick any medicine. If you have a regular cough or cold, it's fine to pick whatever you know stuff is there. But if you have something serious, you should not be picking stuff from the pharmacy. You should be going to the doctor. And that's what is with the mantras. If you need a, a deeper, profound mantra, you got to get it from a qualified mantra expert. And it could take weeks and months for them to give you the mantra, but offer this much of patience when you work with someone to get the mantra. I got my first mantra after a wait of five years. So that's how, you know, these mantras really organically develop. Okay. Number two, many of you ask me, uh, do mantras have a meaning? Because many of you have mantras and you are told mantras do not have a meaning. You know, mantras are in Sanskrit language. Every language has a meaning. So why would a mantra will not have a meaning? There's certain things, you know, the basic uh, uh, seed mantras or the initial stages of mantras, they have very specific meaning. As the mantras become very deep, profound and very advanced, they may not have a specific direct meaning, but there is still a very clear context, very clear signs of each mantra. So if someone tells you, simply to repeat a word and don't worry about the meaning of it, do not do that mantra because you need to know the meaning. You need to know the signs, the context behind that mantra. Uh, unfortunately, mantra, uh, uh, the way uh, people are given mantras, that has become a franchisee business in a way. You know, you are asked your name, date of birth, place of birth, and you are given a mantra. That's not how mantras are supposed to be given. 
Yeah, the mantra is supposed to be given according to your chakra energy, your intuition, your uh, strength, your weakness, your intentions. There are countless factors. This is why giving a mantra could take months or even years. Uh, and mantras evolve as you evolve. As your spiritual practice evolves, the mantras continue to evolve. The mantras I share on public platform, they're mostly seed mantras because I know if I'm sharing something on public platform, I do not have a control on who's doing it and how they are doing it. So I give the mantras on public platforms, which could be done by anyone and they will not have any harmful effect. Okay, they will have a certain benefit and some people experience very significant uh, degree of benefit uh, with these mantras. And some people start to feel the shift within. But because these are the seed mantras, they're sort of universal mantras that work with everyone. Think of, think of them as, um, as, as an appetizer, as potato. It could be put in any vegetable. You'll eat it. It will you know, connect with a lot of some people. It may not be everybody's favorite, but you can have it. So that's uh, 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 the rough analogy, the food analogy of the mantra. Um, now this mantra is um uh, it's beautiful uh but there's more than that there's an amazing story behind this mantra i grew up listening to this story and that's how i remember this mantra that's how i think about you know this mantra when i meditate now these are stories i hope uh, the stories are true you know because they are shared by people over the ages over the centuries and the meaning changes as people share the stories but uh what i believe is if the story uh, leaves a certain resonance if the story empowers you you take that absorb that story okay now this is a, a story uh, from the times of buddha the enlightened master it said that when buddha was about to die his disciples they gathered around him and uh, they were sad their master is leaving them their guru is leaving them because they literally you know experienced so many transformations in the presence of the great buddha so they were obviously sad but more than sad they were scared that if uh, our teacher leaves us who will look after us who will protect us spiritually who will give us the wisdom who will be guiding us so there was a lot of fear panic insecurity and buddha gathered everybody and he said you know you should you are enlightened uh, teacher uh, students and teachers you you teach people uh, i was not expecting you all to be so sad and so scared and they all said you know we need you on a daily basis you are our guru you are our teacher we cannot imagine to uh, to bloom to grow spiritually if our teacher is not with us. And in the Eastern traditions, the guru and student tradition is considered the highest relationship ever. So there was uh, in a lot of pain and, and grief around uh, this, this you know, situation that Buddha might be leaving them in, in you know, any moment actually. So Buddha listened and observed the affair and he said, I'm going to give you a mantra that's going to be the collection, the collective, you know, wisdom of all the teachings you have learned. And the mantra is Apo Deepa Bhava, which means be your own light. That's what the meaning of mantra is. Be your own light. And I have given this mantra to many students, especially the ones who are struggling uh, with self-trust, self-esteem, self-worthiness. Sometimes, you know, the lack of worthiness comes from the family. Sometimes it's a relationship that leaves people feeling that they're not good enough. The reasons could be any, but a conscious repetition of Apo Deepa Bhava, it has proven to be quite a powerful mantra. And um, some people have experienced an extremely significant shift with this mantra. And my hope is you all will also experience it and stay with me because I'm going to share how to do this mantra because how to do them is as important as knowing about the mantra. Now, mantra is like a seed. It has to be planted when the soil is fertile, okay? So how do you plant the seed of this mantra? You got to make sure your awareness, your consciousness is fully receptive, okay? 
first step is basically to go through a conscious breathing. Okay, that could look like inhaling the breath and exhaling the breath gently. Do that for a good few minutes. After that's done, you could integrate intention. You could, you know, plant gratitude. You could offer your gratitude, your acknowledgement uh, to your ancestors, acknowledgement to all the known and the unknown sources, and gratitude to all the wisdom all the good things happening in life and gratitude for also the things that are not happening according to your expectations because when you express gratitude for everything the universe starts to respect that and you will be benefited when you offer that gratitude toward the grand scheme of universe okay so these are the first five seven minutes of the meditation the conscious breathing offering gratitude and then bringing your awareness on the heart Okay, this is the center of your uh, love, joy, healing, the relationships, and so much more power. Bring the awareness, the attention on the heart center. Okay, listen to the heartbeats, be aware of the heartbeats, and gently start to go deeper in your awareness. And gently start to go deeper in that infinite consciousness, and then start to repeat the mantra, Apo Deepa Bhava. A conscious repetition, not fast, not, you know, too slow, very conscious. You repeat it and then you pay attention to what, what's happening. Okay, inhale the breath and repeat Apo Deepa Bhava. Pause and then gently let go. Again, Apo Deepa Bhava and gently let go. And now the best part as you consciously repeat the mantra, and if you know the meaning of it, your awareness starts to receive the message that you are integrating and cultivating that self-trust. And then the blocks start to open up. The keys start to unlock all the secrets that you need to know, all the wisdom that you need to know, and things start to shift. And now the good news is I have recorded an entire guided meditation using the mantra Apo Deepa Bhava. It's available on my podcast, Break the Norms. It's on iTunes, Spotify. Again, the link is in the bio or in the show description if you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, but go to the podcast. It's the latest episode. It's released today. So it should be there already. Um, it's called Self-Trust Meditation. When you click on it, you can meditate and do not forget to uh, share this meditation with others because I think a lot of people need this meditation right now. And I do hope to see some of you on this weekend's workshop. Okay. Thank you for listening. Stay safe, stay well, and I'll see you soon.